All right, welcome back to Watchers Review, where we watch the movies and give our opinions on them. I'm your host, Luciano, here with... Bismarck Cooper. And today we're just going to be talking about some movies and give our two cents on them. So, Bismarck, what's a good movie you want to start with? Let's start with Bullet Train. How about that? Bullet Train? Okay, all right. So, that's a really good movie. <laughs> it's, it is, it's too good to be described, really. It's like, it's amazing. Yeah, um... I don't know, just the cinematography, ten scenes, out of ten. sets. The cast. The cast is really track. good. Brad Pitt is the main character. Um, they also have Bad Bunny, too, as one of the kind of quote-unquote villains of the movie. So definitely. Good written, very good written. Like, all okay. of the villains are amazingly written. They're, they're fleshed out for a movie, especially like Bullet Train, too, where you have, like, these kind of harder scenes to watch, and then it's immediately cut with, like, comedy or whatnot. So. yeah. I think it's too. Like, it, it, it handles itself well. It like knows when to take itself seriously, but also still kind of joke around and you know yeah. be a fun movie to watch. It, it is. It's like also. It's just like the way that it just runs like amazingly is like really good. Oh, yeah. Like the way how all of it goes like progressively. How you get farther down the train. Oh yeah. Like, throughout the movie. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. He travels down the train and whatnot, and you get more like progress. Yeah, and then finally at the end, like the final stop, they're all the way at like the back of the train or so. It kind of remi- or yeah, the, by the front. It yeah, kind of reminds yeah. me of level bosses in like a video game, where like <laughs> yeah, as you go through like the different rooms or like especially like Mario or something, you oh, get to yeah, the end of a world yeah. and then you have like a boss. Yeah, like that. That's what it reminds me of. But yeah, like. And a each new character. room having like a different villain or something. Yeah, like, and they all they're all a different theme out. too. Like even though it takes place in like a commercial bullet train, it's the each segment has like its own characteristics. Like you have like the bougier one where it's like the nice bar kind of area and whatnot, and then you also have the um, what do you call it? Like the business class kind of, and then there's one that's sponsored by like a plushie or whatnot, like oh, yeah. very bright lit neon kind of lights. So. Yeah, it's definitely like something that you would see regularly. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So definitely a you know sets are great the the music too like it's i think it's when a movie has good music it's not really it, like the main it talking gives point. it it gives it like a different like feeling yeah like the music is a huge part of like how a movie is like portrayed yeah i think too with this one it was just good because it was like oh it's subtle it like fits in it doesn't have to do anything you know too much so mm. um but yeah no i very good movie definitely watch it the character like all the villains are fleshed out too um like for example bad bunny's character they give him his own little character arc where it shows him you know doing these like different crimes and jobs and whatnot getting money and then um leads up to like his wedding and everything he worked for and finally like for it to be like destroyed and whatnot all right there in just like a moment's notice oh yeah just like the main character ladybug like just being there knowing yeah he's like he's technically filling in for uh carter yeah (laughs) um and he was like yeah carter he's not here he's got like a stomach bug or whatnot and they're like the i think the villain at the end was like i want carter and they're like we don't i we don't know where carter is like he's he's got got my flu yeah like i'm just filling in the i'm just filling in for him i'm just here he's like oh well well, i'm gonna kill you anyway yeah like the comedy in the movie it's very tasteful while still being like funny that's why I think was really good about it. So yeah, um, but yeah. So we're gonna move on to our next movie, um, and I think that should be Django Unchained. It's an amazing movie. Django Unchained. It's like I like how like it just goes into like so much like during out the movie, like showing all of like the pain while also showing it like as an action movie too. It's really oh yeah, a good movie. It's. It's very interesting, you know. Uh, it's you'd have to really watch it to kind of understand much of kind of what we're saying, but it's oh no, it's it's a great cast too because it's not like they're casting Adam Sandler in a horror movie, you know, or like yeah, The Rock and yeah, like they take something. more like serious actors, I guess. Yeah, but, yeah. Like Samuel say- X and his role in the movie is very fitting with everything else he does. Like if you know his performance in one movie, that's how it is in this one, just times by ten. Um, I mean, the role that he had to play would be, like, a very hard role for, like... Oh, for any other actor, Anybody yeah. to play. But for him, like, it's just like, oh, yeah, give me it. It's, like, it's just another Tuesday, like... Oh, yeah. You have to do it. Yeah. Um, like, his role, Leonardo DiCaprio, he was, like... Yeah, oh, ugly he, with his role. I like, feel like with Leo, if you tell him, like, oh, this is going to be a hard role, you know, a lot of people have put it down, he's like, well, give me it. Like, yeah, he, I mean, he, he does it. He'll do flawlessly. it. Flawlessly. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I remember there was an interview posted uh, that Jimmy... Uh, Jimmy Fox was like talking about doing this movie 
mm-hmm. and saying how Leonardo DiCaprio was having like trouble with it. And then uh, Samuel Jackson had to just say, oh yeah, it's just another Tuesday. We just got to do this. Yeah. And then he just could like get it just instantly right after that. Oh, yeah. it's like, it's well, also fun. too, because Samuel Jackson's been, because uh, Django and Chain's a Tarantino film. So, and Samuel Jackson's been in like how many Tarantino movies, you know? Oh, that's a lot. So I think he's very familiar with that style. He's very comfortable on like on that set being like, I know what I'm doing here. Yeah, yeah. So I, I definitely kind of, you know, you can see the characters and like how well that they are. Yeah, so. I mean, everything they did, like the scenery was. Oh really, my gosh, like, yeah. The scenery was crazy that they had the camp. Some of the camera shots were really. Oh yeah, cool too. I remember it's like uh, with some of the, like the fields or whatnot, or like when they were um, or like one of Django's papers. first like jobs or whatnot. When they're like, you can see the farm down below it and whatnot. Oh yeah, when he showed up with the blue suit or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was that was a really yeah. good. Like I liked that just whole, like the landscape views, like the cinematography oh, yeah. that they had was really really good. Oh yeah, uh, um, very good movie though. I I do enjoy that one a lot. Yeah, it was a good movie. For the sure. ending. That was a ten out. That very, was a very ending. Very it wasn't good. like one of those endings where it's like, oh, everything is good or whatnot. It's yeah, gonna be so great. It's kind of. Le- I don't want to say a cliffhanger, but like, it, it left you with something. Yeah, it, it leaves a little. I don't want to say a little bit to be desired, but it leaves you with a little bit of ambiguity and kind of wondering, like, oh, oh, you know, what's gonna happen next? Yeah. Like, what, what does this mean or something like exactly. that? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think too, it's like one of those sweet endings. It's not just like a a Marvel ending, like, oh, everything is gonna be back to normal. Like, it's not. You, you know, like. One of the main characters that Django follows, Dr. Schultz, he dies. So it's like it, everything's yeah. not fine. It's always not great, like seeing exactly. a character die at the end of the movie. Like, oh yeah, just... especially too because Schultz, he basically almost sacrifices himself um, to kill uh, Candy, who's and who's like the slave trader kind of owner who they're uh, talking to to get Django's wife back because she's on the plantation. Um, yeah. So definitely like. Uh, um, I, I've seen some analysis too on like jo- Dr. Schultz and his character and basically them saying like, oh, he's in it for himself. He doesn't care about Django or something like that. And that like yeah. when he kills himself, it's basically I'm taking this monster out of the world and also I'm leaving with it too. So almost leaving Django on his own or whatnot. Yeah. So I think too, that's almost, I don't want to say reading a little bit into it too much, but it's like, oh, the curtains are like gray or whatnot. It's yeah. like, oh, you know, they represent the sadness. Yeah. It's like, not really, but... It's w- with the you know Tarantino film, and also with the I think definitely characters' actions and whatnot. Like, yeah, I th- it makes sense to kind of look far into what their purposes or like actions mean. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So, uh, and then I'm gonna let you talk about the All last right. one. Our last movie, I believe, that we have is the Ballards of Buster Scruggs, right? Correct. Yeah. So. Ballard of Buster Scruggs, which is an amazing movie that follows down like the Oregon Trail, which goes through. So you start watching the movie, 10 minutes in, you start finding the main character. Oh, you like him, everything. And then next thing you know, he ends up dying within the first like 10 minutes. So it's like, yeah. oh, what is this story about? And then it just picks up with like whoever just killed him. Like it was just the last chapter. Like it just picks it up with it. Yeah. Um, it's an anthology film, six parts. Um, and you go into it too because the movie's called The Ball of Buster Scruggs. And yeah. you see Buster and you're like, oh, cool, this will be fun. Kind of like a Western John Wick in a way. Uh, and then he dies and you're like, oh, what? What's like, going on here? Exactly. <laughs> like, um, and then you go to the next part and then the next part. And they don't really overlap too much, but like they all have that central theme of, yeah, like the Oregon Trail, kind of like um, Wild West America in a way. Yeah, I mean the cinematography in there too. Like oh that's something God. that you will always see me talk about. Like it's that's something that you always gotta like appreciate when they like oh, take yeah. the time with all it is. Oh yeah, I, I also think too because this movie it was set kind of like some of them were set in like the woods or whatnot. Some were like a traveling um, showsman or whatnot. And then there was uh, I remember the um, the actual Oregon Trail part where they're going yeah. all the way to Oregon. That one I really just love the open plains in it. Like. You know, you can see the people, all the yeah. wagons and whatnot. That one, that and the one about the guy finding like the um, little gold stash kind of, oh, the gold yeah. prospector. That one, I just loved every scene of it, you know? So. Yeah, it's it's a good, it's a really good movie. That's, oh, a, yeah. that's a must watch to see, definitely. Some of the parts are a little bit more forgettable than others. Um, 
I but, mean, what movie isn't like that? Yeah, that's though, true. So it's like, or you have that part where you're just like, ooh, I don't, I want to skip this. I don't like that part of the movie. Yeah, it's, it's boring. I mean, or... For me, though, it's like, it, it can be bad sometimes. Like, I'll just yeah. see it and I'll just quit watching the entire movie, just open yeah. it and not come back to it for like um, days or something. But I feel like with this movie, too, even if it was parts that you didn't like, like, I remember Meal Ticket. I don't know if you know that one, the uh, quadriplegic guy. And he does like these kind of, like, it's not even like oh, reciting yeah. the Bible, but like very kind of, theatrical speech or whatnot yeah i remember watching that and i was like this isn't that good and then you get to the end of it with the chicken that can do math um <laughs> it's like, yeah and then it's just like what does it mean for this guy and then yeah he gets yeah you're gonna have to wonder yeah. after that and you and then you just see the empty cart with just the chicken in there and without the guy and then you're like oh you know yeah so um i don't know it, it really keeps you entertained too uh it's more of a serious film. I know the ones we were talking about are kind of humorous, thrown in, seriousness. But this sense. one's kind of more serious than the other ones. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, very good movie. I do highly recommend it. Very definitely, fun to watch. Definitely watch for anybody who's looking for a good movie. Like yeah. This, Anyone um, who's got like an itch for kind of a wild, no, not like a Wild West, but like kind of like somewhat, a... Somewhat, somewhat. Yeah, like earlier. Pioneer. Yeah, time. Pioneer kind of movies. Like yeah. very, very good movie. And it gives you a little bit of everything too. You you know you get Baldur Buster Scruggs actually like that. That's your Western itch. Your yeah. pioneering one is when they're like traveling to Oregon. Same with like the Gold Prospector one. That one I, I just love the shots on that one. I will always talk about just that part of the movie. Yeah. Just because like the character and then his joy and he's like I found the pot of gold or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Or not the pot of gold, but like the little you know the um collection of it or whatnot. Yeah, so right. I don't remember the name of it. You know, <laughs> wait, like a panner, a pan's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Sheet, um, or something like that, or something, yeah. panner's pan or something like that. Close enough, <laughs> I think. Like, I don't know, like, but no, uh, I just, uh, you know, really good part. I think it was just a very well put together movie, too. And I think if you j go into it, like, obviously, now you're gonna know it's an anthology film, um, but I think going into it without knowing that it's an anthology was really good, yeah. just because then you're like, oh, you're introduced to like the characters and whatnot. And it's not like they make them complex either. They're no, really no. simple characters. Yeah. Like it's easy to understand. It's you like, feel for them too when, like, say one of them dies or something. You're like, oh, like, like that's a little dang. off putting. Like you want, I wanted him to live. Like, yeah. why, why y'all going to do that? Yeah, yeah. So, but no, very, very good movie. So, yeah. Any final thoughts? None that I can say. Yeah, watch all the movies. Uh, they're very especially good. Especially Bullet Train. Especially Bullet Train. That's like an update that you definitely need to see yeah. if you have not seen it. I, I think if we had to put them in order, it goes Bullet Train, Django Unchained, and then, and then Bullet Buster Scrubs. Yes, definitely. So, not saying that any of these are better than each all other. Them, they all do something. All of them are well. must watches. Like, definitely in your watch list, you have to go see them. Like, yeah. eventually, at some point. Yeah. So, I think that concludes all for today's episode. So, Absolutely. hope you all have a great day.